Hello. Um, in this tutorial, I will demonstrate creating a 3D reservoir using um, Plaxis LE 3D. In the project name, I will type 3D reservoir. This model will be using the groundwater uh, option in 3D space with a steady state flow calculation uh, using metric units and the time will be in days. For the model name, I'll just type in 3D reservoir example. Then I'll hit OK. I'll be greeted by this um, 3D Cartesian plane uh, with the X, Y, and Z axis. The first thing I need to do is create the geometry. To start, I will go to the Regions tab. Click New. For the properties of the region, I'll generate a new polygon. And then I need to define the dimensions of the polygon. I am using the tab to cycle through the cells. And I know the geometry already. So here I'm just defining the, um, the points that define the polygon geometry. Once that's concluded, I can hit OK, then hit OK. I will call this the slope. And then for the second region, I need to define the dimensions. As before, I will be defining the point. Then I'll hit OK. I'll hit OK. And now I need to name it the, um, the label I want to attribute to this polygon. In this case, it will be reservoir. I'll hit OK. Once I've generated the polygons, I need to define the surface definitions. I'll go to Surfaces, click on Properties. For the first surface, I will define it having an elevation of zero. For the second surface, I need to define a tabular format. In this example, the, the surface um, points are already provided in the tutorial, so I will just copy and paste those. For surface two, I will need to go to grid. And then I need to copy the points from the example. Once the points are copied, I can paste the um, tabular input. Once the data is pasted, I can press OK.
you can see here the geometry is now generated. Now I need to define the material properties. I'll go into the materials manager, click new. I will call this tutorial soil. It will be saturated. First, I need to define the volumetric water content. And the specific gravity. Then I need to define the hydraulic connectivity. Once that material is defined, I'll click OK. Now I need to define the soil for the polygons I generated earlier. To do that, I'll go to Stage Settings, and then click on the two polygons I defined earlier and use the Tutorial Soil. You can see now the volume has been filled in by the soil I've just defined. Now I need to define the groundwater flow boundary conditions. First, I will go to boundaries and boundary conditions. I will click new to define a new boundary. I will set the name to zero flux here. And then I will define the boundary condition as a zero flux zone. Now I need to add sidewalls. And here I'll click on every um, surface that I want the boundary condition applied. Now I will define every surface where I want the boundary condition applied. Once that's finished, I'll click OK. Now I want to generate a new boundary condition. I will call this head constant two meters. I will define it as a constant head boundary. As before, I need to define the sidewalls. Here, this one sidewall will contain the boundary. Sorry, it'll be this one. Then I'll hit OK. I'll generate one more boundary condition. I'll label this surface head. 
10.5 meters. There will be a constant head boundary as before. Here, I, instead of a sidewall, I will click on the Surfaces tab and then click on Add Surface. Here, I just want it, the region to have reservoir. Then I'll click OK. Then I'll click OK. Now I have defined my materials, I have defined the geometry, and I've defined my groundwater flow boundary conditions. Now I need to generate the mesh. I'll go to Mesh Settings. Because I'm using tetrahedrons in a 3D space, I want those tetrahedrons to have dimensions of one cubic meter. A volume, then I'll hit generate. You can see the mesh has now been generated. Once the mesh is generated, I can solve for my steady state groundwater flow solution. I'll hit analyze. I want to save the model. A dialog bo box will pop up to show me the status of the calculation. You can see it's been complete. Then I'll hit exit. Now I have defined my calculation. Now I need to go to the output. Uh, to go to the output, I'll click on this icon that shows a prompt that says open output. Once the calculation has finished, I will go to the output. Here I can inspect the different output settings. So right now I'm looking at the pore water pressure in units of kilopascal. I could also change that by going to the plot contour settings and then choosing the applicable variable I want to inspect. So let's inspect total head. I can use the control button and then cycle, rotate the model in the graphical unit interface by holding down control and moving the mouse cursor. You can see here that there's a clear hydraulic gradient near this defined uh, polygon region here that radiates outward and that the, um, the total head uh, decreases as we go down the slope. I can also inspect the groundwater flow. I have uh, lots of options to visualize what specifically I want to view for the water flow. Suppose I want to see the vertical flux, I can hit flux Z, hit OK. And then I can, that from there, I can see the magnitude of uh, flux in the vertical direction. Remember, we're working in 3D Cartesian space. So this Z axis is the, um, the vertical direction. Okay, that concludes my presentation. Thank you.